I'm Dr. Flux, and today we're looking at this amazing sci-fi blaster from Titan Fall 2. This blaster right here is called the SP-15 Hatchet, and this blaster is very much influenced by the original design, which is called the SP-14 Hatchet, and later used in Titan Fall 2, and we all know it as the Alternator. Something that makes this blaster really special is this really cool collapsible stock. You basically hit that, and the thing just completely comes out and you got a nice full, full length stock. Another very unique thing about this blaster is the profile. It looks super cool. It looks very sci-fi, which I'm all about. I can almost see this in like cyberpunk. And just so you know, this thing does fit the Out of Darts Tai Chi Mag. Really cool. It just gives it an even better profile. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the build process of this blaster. This is not a full build guide. This is gonna be more of my tips and tricks of how to build one of these if you're looking to build one. Stick around for this video because I'm gonna be taking this thing outside. We're gonna be checking out its feet per second and also how accurate is this thing. So let's jump right into the video. So the SP-15 hatchet was brought to life by RZT Design. This is a bullpup blaster that is fully 3D printed and let's just get it out of the way because I know a lot of people are going to be asking, what is the price to build one of these? Filament price was not too much. You can pretty much print it all out with under a spool of filament. So that's cool. Filament's like usually about 30 bucks. The hardware list that was provided, I ended up spending $150 or so. And that is because a lot of the parts you have to order multiples. You can't just order one. So the pins in particular, you have to buy like, you know, 50 pins or whatnot. Also, I wanted to order extras because I now have enough parts to build about three of these. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're going to, I know there's going to be a lot of people asking, Hey, I just want to build one. How much is the hardware cost? That's going to be very tricky because the way these type of builds work is you can never get just enough hardware to build one. So let me talk about the tips and tricks I have on this build real quick, because I just want to make sure people are aware that this is a pretty new design. And usually I don't jump into these because there's still a lot of tweaking that needs to happen. But for the most part, this build was pretty easy. The guide was very, very well done. Uh, there was a few things that I wish there was a little bit more clarification, which I'm going to talk about now. The first one, you know, I'm not perfect. Maybe I missed this step, but Right here, there is a drum spring, and this drum spring has to be in a particular orientation or this whole thing's not gonna work well. Essentially, this spring right here has to go in one way. So I'll try to basically hold this like this and then put a picture of the drum spring so you understand the orientation. Secondly, this part right here, this black part right here, on the back, the pusher mechanism, it's basically it's on a track that slides back and forth. You need to make sure that this back section is nice and filed out and smooth because that back pusher thing has to go all the way back or what happens is you don't have enough clearance for the darts. So I spent quite a bit of time, you know, just tweaking and sanding and everything. And I even found like if I over tighten some of this back area that it would affect the ability to feed darts. So that's my main advice for this. Uh, over there, other than that, the build is super easy. Like everything up from here forward, you can just do like super quick kind of like a hummingbird or whatnot. I mean, it's just e probably even easier. It's a very easy build up here. Once you get to the back with this with this system, how you have the angled, because you got to look, that's, that's a very aggressive angle to be scooping a dart and putting it through flywheels. So yeah, there, you can just, uh, you can just imagine everything's got to be just right for this thing to function well. And of course, you know, got a lot of complexity here with the stock. So that's all got to be perfect and it takes a little bit of time to kind of get used to the the perfect settings for you know how this stock you know as far as tensions and you know i had uh i had 
issues sourcing my own springs because I had my spring bin, so I had to kind of play with different springs. And that brings me to the last point worth mentioning. The rollers in the list to the pins that, the, that are supposed to go in the rollers didn't work for me. They were, uh, I think he, he put in the instructions that they need to be filed. I, I'm, I don't have much luck uh, filing those pins. I think they're like steel or something, but like I just couldn't get those things to work. So I ended up sourcing my own pins and I, I just went to my, my drawer, which I have a bunch of pins and I found one that fits. Just to kind of show that there's this little roller here and it's got to fit onto the pin. As you can see, that is the diameter of pin I ended up using. So a little under five millimeter. 4.97. So I just want to kind of put out those few tips and tricks if you would like to build one of these. I think it is a, it's a moderately challenging build. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's up there. But if you're into Titanfall 2 and you love the alternator, this is probably one of those builds that you must do. Currently the files are free on GitHub and he asks that if you are looking to sell these, please talk to him. Uh, this is not just free files for everyone to just, you know, make and sell. So please contact the creator, RZT Designs. So let's go ahead and take this thing outside and get some chronograph readings and check its accuracy. Let me run down what's in here real quick, just so we can understand what kind of numbers we're getting. So we have the Hurricane flywheels from Worker, and we have a couple, a pair of Krakens from Atta Darts. That is a 3S motor that is uh, very spicy, so hopefully we get some good numbers out of here. We are also running 3S LiPo. Let's check it out. Yeah, so in conclusion, I'm very happy to build one of these. This is not a build for everyone. Like I said earlier, if you are a fan of Titanfall 2 and you love the alternator, I'd say this is a definite. I know this thing does not function like it does in the game. This is more in line with a cosplay piece and is really just trying to have the look of an alternator. So take that for what it's worth. But as a functioning Nerf Blaster, I think it's definitely good. I think this is a, this is probably a good uh, close quarter combat type platform, and I'm going to be using this in my future wars. Now, before we dive into ergo and aesthetics, I just want to put a full disclaimer here. This is essentially taken right out of a game. And the problem with game pieces is a lot of times it doesn't translate well into the real world. This blaster, however, did a, a pretty decent job. I would say this is a little bit uncomfortable the way it jabs into your, into your elbow, but it does give a nice satisfying like connection, like, yeah, this thing is where it needs to be. I could see over a prolonged play though, this thing might actually start to not feel the greatest, but it can be ignored because like I said earlier, this is built to look like a game piece. The thumb hole stock is pretty comfortable. I, I've, I'm not gonna say it's the best thumb hole stock, but it, it is pretty comfortable. A lot of this is just the shape of my hand. I think, I'm sure there's some people out there that find this extremely comfortable. Now, as far as performance is concerned, I would like to see this blaster in a two stage. I think that would have been a little bit better for those hurricane wheels, you know, the smaller pulsar wheels or hurricane wheels. I think uh, two stages is pretty nice on those. Three seems like overkill, two is pretty good. So I hope in the future there's a de design for this to basically add a second stage. I think it'd be very good. I want to take a moment to thank RZT Designs for building one of these. I know designing a blaster takes a tremendous amount of time, patience, and dedication. So I want to thank you for f finishing this project. I hope to see more from you. I think this is some really cool design work. And I'd like to see more people build these and get other people's opinions about this platform. Well, I'm Dr. Flux. If you haven't noticed on this video, we have a little join button next to it. So I've actually got this uh, membership 
for Dr. Flux YouTube setup. So if you if you want to join the Dr. Flux or Flux Labs community, please join. There is a list of benefits in there, and I greatly appreciate all the support that all my Patreons and members are giving. So I want to basically start making a wall of all my supporters that I'll show at the end of every video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video because that helps tremendously. And as always, happy foam flinging. Thank you.